Welcome everybody um, to the uh, Coptic Rights class. Um, I hope you all had a great uh, Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving and happy um, fast of the nativity. We started the fast of the nativity last th uh, Thursday, actually the, the same day that uh, that was the Thanksgiving feast. Um, the fast of the nativity <clears throat> is uh, 43 days. Uh, as you may know, uh, it's 40 days for um, to uh, represent the 40 days that Moses fasted on the mountain um, when he went up to receive the word of God, which is the Ten Commandments. So as Moses fasted on the mountain for 40 days to receive the word of God, we also fast 40 days to receive the word of God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> And that's why, like one of the very famous, um, one of the very famous hymns that we chant during uh, Kiak is the hymn of the burning bush. So now, now we understand you know, the correlation between <laughs> the burning bush and the the fast of uh, nativity or Christmas fast. Um, just as Moses fasted to receive the word of God, so we also fast to receive uh, the word of God. The other three days um, that we fast is also to uh, remind us um, of the um, three days that um, for moving the mountain of the Mokattam. Um, as you may recall, there the story um, that um, the mayor or the, uh, uh, the Khalifa uh, asked the Pope to move the mountain to prove his faith. And so he fasted for three days. And at the end of the three days, St. Simon the Tanner, he came and with his faith, he moved the mountain of the Makatta. So um, we fast these three days. We The church added these three days um, to the fast of nativity. And that's why we fast 43 days. Um, last week, um, you took the, uh, um, the lesson 10 of the Coptic, and it was the last two letters of the Coptic alphabet, which is Chai and Chima. And these are probably the, the, the two most difficult letters. That's why we left them at the end. So just as a review of uh, last week's lesson, this letter, it's called chai, chai, like the, the Arabic cha sound, like when you say chamsa, when you say malucheya, right? Everybody knows malucheya, right? So it's pronounced cha, like chen, like we, we say je benyot et chen if you know, in the name of the father. And this letter, chima, it looks like the number six, right? Um, the way I, I like to remember it, or um, uh, it makes it easy for me to remember, it kind of looks like the front of a train, of a choo-choo train, right? If you look at it, you can imagine that this is, you know, the front of the engine of the choo-choo train. And you, this is like the uh, tail on top of, is like the smoke coming out of the, of the engine. And the choo-choo train goes what? Choo-choo-choo, right? So uh, chima is pronounced ch. Like a, like a TCH or like the CH um, in English, like 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 the word church. So like this word here, choice, 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 which means Lord. Or you may be familiar with ep choice, ep choice, the Lord. So this is the chima. So these were the two letters that, that we learned last week. So now we have learned all of the Coptic letters. So we will review all the Coptic letters now. And I would like volunteers, as, as we have been doing in the past few weeks, to um, volunteer to read the letters. Um, so please raise your hand to volunteer. I see a few people already raised their hand. Um, so we'll go with volunteers first, and then when we run out of volunteers, we'll ask people. And it's okay, you can try. If you, if you are not comfortable, you can just say, you know, uh, I don't wanna try, or thank you or something like that, then we'll move on, it's no problem. But I encourage everybody to try. So first we have Thomas, hi Thomas. Um, 
Just tell us the letter and the pronunciation, like alpha, A, Vita, V, B, like that. Go ahead, and, and you can do this whole call. Alpha, A. Can I say the rest? Yes, go ahead. Vita, V, or B. Gamma, G, H, uh, N. Delta, Tha, uh, Da. Mm -hmm. I, E, and So, So. Okay, this this letter is called E, not I. It's it's just like English E, right? So E is E and Su is Su. Very good. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, next we have Gabby. Gabby, can you do the next column? So B. This column here. Oh. Zeta as in zoo. Eta as in feet. So tell us the pronunciation of the letter, like Zeta, uh, Z. It kind of looks like an S, a Z, and then it like zoo. Uh, Eta looks like an H, like feet. Yes, like 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 two E's, or like a long E. Eta yeah. looks like an O. T it could be T H as in think or T as in tree. A uh, Yota looks like an I. It, it can be pronounced as an I like sit or Y like yet. Mm -hmm. Papa looks like a K, like like. So. You want to continue yeah. or do you want to? No, I can continue. Go ahead. And then Lola, as in um, Lola looks like a triangle with a little hat, as in it's, it's, an, it's, it, it's pronounced as an L like lamb. Mm -hmm. May, it looks like an upside down N, as in moon. Mm -hmm. Nay, looks like an N, as in near. And then Iski, looks like a... Xy. Xy. Xy looks like a double Z, as in it can be, it is X, as in thanks. Mm -hmm. And then O, or O is... Like print looks like an O print like as a not. Very good. Thank you, Gabby. Daniel, can you do the next set? P uh, kind of looks like two pillars that has line on top mm -hmm. and it's pronounced P as Paul. Good. Ro, it's like it looks like a P and it's pronounced R like a road. Sima, it kind of looks like a C, and it's pronounced like an, the S, the, what an S sounds like in city. Good. Ta yeah. looks like a T with a tail at the end, and it's, it can work as T from, as test. Epsilon is kind of like a V with humps, like with curls. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and that's it a nice could one. be... V as in nav, a long O as in O, and E as in, I mean, as in hero. So before we continue, who can tell me the rule of the epsilon? Remember, I, I spent quite a bit of time on that because I told you this is a very important vowel and we see it a lot in, in many of the Coptic words. So who can tell me the rule of the, of the epsilon? Sue, can you say it? No. Okay. Um, somebody volunteer. Daniel's already um, saying so. Somebody else. Remember, there were three rules. That's why we have three ways to pronounce it. Who remembers? Mina, do you remember? Uh, no. Okay. Heidi, do you remember? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by rule, but I think it always depends on the letter before it. Yes. That's why it has different sounds based on the letter before it. So it's a V sound like V if it's preceded by alpha or A. Exactly. Good. And if it's preceded by an O, so it sounds long O. 
And other than that would be a Y sound. Very good, exactly. So epsilon, if it comes after an A or an E, or, yeah, alpha or E, then it's a V. Like, like the example here, we have Stavros, Stavros here. We have the epsilon after an A, so it becomes a V, so Stavros. If it comes after an O, then it's a long O, like you and no, you and no. So here we have like two O's. And then any any other situation, then it's just an E, like Kyrie, Kyrie. So again, the rule of the epsilon, if it's after an A or an E, it's a V. If it's after an O, it's an O. Anything else, it's an E. I, I repeat this because as I said, this is an important vowel letter and we see it in many, many, many uh, Coptic words. So it's good for us to make sure that we, um, we remember this, uh, this rule. Okay, um, Mina, do you want to continue? I think Daniel stopped at the epsilon. Can you continue the last two letters here? Uh, sure. So we have V, that sounds like... Uh, mm -hmm. I wanna say that's a... Um, like a pH sound, right? Uh, um, pH sound. And and then we have and then we have key that that sounds like a capital X, and uh, it can be pronounced as H. And and the example of this could be a syrup with with means uh, with means a uh, hell. Um. And um, the Arabic K aids uh. And, and the better example of this is Egrisos, which means Christ. Okay, good, yes. So key, uh, key is pronounced like a K, like the word Kimi, that's usually the, the pronunciation. And then in, if it's a Greek word or a word barred from Greek, then it could be an SH, like sh, like Sherry, like we say Sherry in the right? Or it could be Kha, like the Arabic ha, like Christos. Good, thank you, Mina. Okay, so the next, this will be the last um, set. Um, so let's see who hasn't tried yet. Somebody volunteer, or I will pick somebody. Okay, uh, okay go ahead, Sue. P. No, this uh, the, this column, the the last oh, column uh, here. Let's see. Uh, let's uh, P S like psalmody. Mm -hmm. Psalmody, yeah. And then U. Looks like W and U. Uh, shy. Sounds like sh. The same. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Fay, Fay, five, Fay, uh, sounds like F. Good. Mm. Somebody else want to continue? Uh, Nether, do you want to continue? Yeah, uh, Chai, which is um, like. Uh, like the letter B, uh, which is uh, ha, like khir or khiar, mm -hmm. uh, hori, uh, which is like, um, I don't know, like a dark, or, uh, which is like a backwards uh, like S. House, or backward S, okay. Yeah. And then we have, which is pronounced as H, but like in house, or ha in house, jinja, which is like a delta with two. Uh, Hums, um, uh, it's pronounced like G, like Go, or J, like Joy. Mm -hmm. uh, Shima, which is like uh, the train, as you mentioned, um, uh, which is pronounced as Ch, like Church. Mm -hmm. Then we have T, which is like letter T, and it's pronounced as T as well, like uh, TB or Tiri. Good, thank you. Yeah. So 
if you as you remember, there's two T letters in Coptic, right? There's the Tav, this mm -hmm. one here, and there's the T, this one here. So the yeah. difference between them, you can see the Tav um, is, just looks like a T, but the T looks like a T with an I on top of it. So mm -hmm. this is like two letters together. It's the T E or the T I. So in, in this case, it's just a T sound, like we say tift, tift, T E V T, tift. But in this case, it's like a T I. So we say so T, so T. So imagine there's a T and an I after it, so T. Mm -hmm. If this was just the top, it would be so, right? It mm -hmm. wouldn't be so T. And mm -hmm. here, if if tift, if uh, if the last letter was a T instead of a tav, it would be tif T. Okay, so you see the difference between them. Mm -hmm. So the, the the T is like two letters, T I, and then the tav is just one letter. Very good, everybody. So um, I will. Um, so now that we know all of the letters, now I I have a little homework assignment for you. Try to write your name in Coptic. Try to write your name in Coptic. Uh, somebody actually on the chat was asking, um, is there a reference for all these letters? Yes, actually it's in, in, in the Google Classroom. I have, um, I have a reference for all the letters, but I can also send it out by email because in case you don't have uh, the Google Classroom, um, I'll send it by email later today, maybe, or tomorrow. I'll send you uh, a document that has all the letters and you can have that as a, as a reference. So this will be a fun little homework assignment. You can try to write your name using the, the Coptic letters. And if you want to share it next week, maybe you can write it on a piece of paper and show it on the camera or take a picture of it. That will be fun. We can do a few people next week uh, to show us how they wrote their name. So now let's uh, learn today the Coptic vowel letters, the Coptic vowel letters. Um, so Coptic, just like any language like English, has consonant letters and it has vowel letters. So the English vowel letters, you know them, they're five, right? A, E, I, O, U. There are five, um, five vowel letters. So if we map, each one of the English letters to the Coptic letters, we will get also the Coptic uh, vowels. So the, uh, the A maps to alpha. That's easy, right? Alpha is A. The E maps to two letters. So we have the E and we have the eta. Remember, the eta is like two E's, or, or I told you one way you can remember it. It's like two I's with like a dash in between them, right? So this is a vowel. So E and eta are both vowel letters and they both map to the E. The yota is easy. The I is the yota. The O maps to both the O and the epsilon because remember I told you that the epsilon, if it comes after an O, it's, a, it's another O, right? So the O maps to the O and also maps to the epsilon. And then the U maps to the, um, the, the W, which is the, the O, right? Um, so we have alpha, e, eta, iota, o, epsilon, u. These are the seven Coptic vowel letters. Like, again, alpha uh, is like a, e and eta is like e, iota is like i, o and epsilon like o, and u is like u. So alpha, e, eta, iota, o, epsilon, u. One more time. Alpha, e, eta, iota, o, epsilon, u. Can we say them together? If you want to un unmute, you can, or you can say it without unmuting, but let's try to say them together, all of us. One, two, three. Alpha, E, Eta, Iota, O, Epsilon, U. Again, one more time. Alpha, E, Eta, Iota, O, Epsilon, U. One last time. Alpha, E, eta, eta, iota, eta. o, epsilon, o. Okay, good. So let's let's do some exercises. Let's practice pronounce, uh, pronouncing with the vowels. So the first one is the alpha, the a. It's like an like an open a, like art, right? So um, we can practice 
by just, you know, very easily a vowel and a consonant. So like this is of, because this is the Vita. So it'll be of. This is the Ramma, so ag, right? So I'd like some volunteers. I'll do the first one and then I'll ask volunteers. So we have of, we have ag, we have ad, and we have ag, right? Okay, so Thomas, can you do the second row here? Um, I can try. Um, so let's see, the first one's the. Good. The, um, what's that word again? This is the Rama, the Ra. Or the, it could be a G or a GH, right? Ra. Ra, good. Da. Mm -hmm. And Ka. Very good. And so, Daniel, can you read this word here? Abraham. Of, this is the Vita, right? So, most of the time it's a V, right? So, of, Ra. Avram. Avraham, not Avraham, because there's two alphas here, right? So you have to pronounce the A twice. So Avraham, Avraham, which is Abraham, Abraham, Avraham. Good, thank you. Um, Noah, can you read this word? Makarios. Good. Makarios, Makarios, which is Makarios, Makarios. Good, good job. Okay. So then we have the second vowel, which is the E. It's a, sh it's a short E like pen, like ev, like egg, like that. So let's see who would like to volunteer for the next one. Andrew, would you like to do the next uh, set? Okay, Andrew's not uh, responding. Uh, Anna Simone, you wanna do the next one? Yes. Go ahead. You can start from the beginning here. Ev. Ev. Oh. Egg. 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 This this is a G, right? So it's like egg. And then this is a D, delta. So what's ED? Add. Add, good. And then EK? Eek. Ek. Good, thank you. All right. Uh, Gabby, you want to do the next set here? Uh, where? This, this last row right here. Uh. He V V H G good D K Excellent. And can you read this word? Very easy. Three letters. Sure. Oh, uh, what was that middle one again? Oh, good. Good. This is the epsilon. Remember the epsilon. If it comes after an A or an E, it's a V. Right? Eva. 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 Good job. Good job. All right. Uh, who wants to do this uh, This one here? Let's see. Um, Thomas? Um, what is the epsilon in this case? So the same thing like the A or the E, it's, the, it's a V. Okay. Ev. Ev. Evle. This is a P, right? Um, yeah. Pev. Pav. Pavle. Pavli. Pavli. Good. Pavli. So remember, I told you the epsilon will we'll see the epsilon a lot. I, I, now you see many, many words will have the epsilon. Good job. Okay. Let's see. The next one is the eta which looks like the H, and it's like a long E, like phi, right? So this will be like Ib. The difference here, this is Eb, this is Ib. 
it's like two e's ib ig like that all right so let's see uh heidi do you want to do the next one um is it the the tag or the long e sorry the long e oh. okay it's ib ig id ik good good all right yeah. who wants to do the next one mina mina you want to do the next row here i want to try so so you have vita and then ita which is like two e's yeah so like v v yes Um, let me think. Good job, Thomas. You wrote yeah. your name in Coptic. Wow. <laughs> um, so this is Ramma and double E. So it's yes. e, right? E, yes. Okay. And then this is Delta and double E. Yeah. D. D. D and then, and then. Uh huh. It's okay. And double E. So, 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 call he key. Key, sorry. Key, good job. Thank you, Mina. You're All welcome. right. Um, Merel, can you read the next word here? Very easy word. Well, it looks big, but it's actually easy and it's very, very popular, very common word we use in the church. Merel? Merel is not answering. Nadia? Sure. Emmanuel. 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 Yeah. Emmanuel. So very good, Nadia. So here we have actually three vowels right after each other, right? We have an O and an Epsilon. So that makes two O's or a very mm -hmm. long O. So we have Emmanuel. And then we have two E's. So actually, if we mm -hmm. map this like to English, so we have four vowels. So Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which is Emmanuel. Good job. Okay, the next word, uh, let's see, Fenuil. Can you say the next word here? Okay, uh, Salwa. Salwa, can you try the next one? Samuel. Okay, um, Samuel. Samuel, you should get this one. Samuel. It's, yeah, but it's, in, in Coptic. Samuel. <laughs> Samuel. 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 Just like Emmanuel, actually the same, right? O, Epsilon, um, Eta, and L. Actually, Eel. These two letters, this is the name of God. So Samuel, Samuel means God listens. Samu in Arabic, similar to Yasma, right? So Samuel, God listens. Emmanuel, il means God. Emmanu means with us. So Emmanuel means God is with us. Okay, the next vowel is the Yota. And we said the Yota is like the, the short I, like in pen. So this would be Ev. Ig, id, ik, like that. Okay, so let's see who can say the next set. Um, Noah, is Chris with you? Yes, he's with us. Okay, Chris, do you, you want to say these uh, these words here? <laughs> He's coming. Okay, until he comes. Let's, he's uh, here. He's okay. here. So go ahead, Chris. Which one? Which one? The last one? Last four. Okay. That's I. Good so, job. Yeah, so V, V, I. V, Y. No, V. V, good. And then this is Rama, like a G. J. Mm -hmm. 
This is a delta, so it's a D. Delta, D. D. And then this is, okay, very good. Good job. Good job. Okay. I do the work. Huh? You want to do the work? Do, oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. T. 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 That's a J. T. G. T. G. T. G. Very good. T. G. Which is sent. T. G. Which is sent through ways. So it was T. G. Good. So, T. G. Okay. Um. Thomas, you want to do this word? Um, yes. So that's... Um, this is the capital M. Maximus. Excellent. Good pronunciation. Maximus. Maximus, which is Maximus. Good job. The next vowel is the O. So this is just a short O, like the word not. So it'd be of, ug, ud, uk, like that. Okay. So let's see. Anna Simone, you want to do the next set here? These four words. Yes. Go ahead. Up. Okay, you're up. doing the, the top one. That's fine. Yes, good. Up. Good. Up. Excellent. Good job. Do you want to do the next one? The next four? Boo. <laughs> it's, it's, it'll be um, va. Because the O is like a short O, like not, right? So it'll be like va. Va. Go. Go. Okay. Do. Do. Okay. Go. 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 Excellent. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Um, Andrew, can you read the next word? Okay, Gabby, can you read the next word? Which word? Oh. This, this one. This is a delta. This is a D. Do. Do. Did we lose Gabby? Can you hear the No, Okay. Who, uh, who mm -hmm. said it? Optic mommy? No. You don't know what Delta looks like? Okay. Yeah, yeah this is Delta. Go, go ahead, Thomas. Say it. He was talking until I said, go ahead and say it. <laughs> okay. Nadia, can you say it? Um, sure. Let me see. <laughs> I lost my screen for a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, which one? Do Matios, yeah. Yes. Do Matios. Do, mm -hmm. there's two O's here. Do Matios. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how about the next word? Can you say the next word? It has three O's. Yeah. P, uh, pico, lo, pico, vo, pico, vo, pico, pico, Lovos, lolo, lovos. Good, yes. Pico lovos, pico, pico lovos. Pico lovos means the short. We, we have a saint. His name is Saint John. Pico lovos, Saint John the Short. John the Short. Yes, pico lovos. Good. Okay, the next vowel is is the O epsilon. That that when we have an epsilon after an O, we said it's a long O, like broom. Okay, so then this would be oov. Oog, oog. You see, there's it's a long O. Okay. 
vu, gu, do, like that, okay? So let's see who, who wants to read this word. Daniel. Excellent. She knew T and, and, and good. The T is the T-I, right? So she knew, it's not she knew, but she knew T. Good job. She knew T, which, which is Shinuda, San Shinuda. Okay. Um, let's see. Heidi, can you do the next one? Um, puff Noti. Excellent. Puff Noti. Puff Noti. Again, O Epsilon, U, and then T. Puff Noti is actually a very nice name. Um, if Noti means what? We know, we, uh, we know this word. We say like if Noti nine on, right? If Noti means God. Pa means belongs to. So Puff Noti means the one who belongs to God. Like Saint Puff Noti is, is the, the man who belongs to God, Puff Noti. The last vowel here is the, is the O. This is the, like a long OA, like board, okay? So like O, O. It's different from this, this is O. You see the difference? And then this is OB. So there's three O sounds. This is a short O. Like do metius. This is a long O, like U, like shinuti. You can see my mouth, right? There's a short O, like do metius. There's long O, like shinuti. And then there's the like the U, which is the O, uh, o A, like ob, og, od, ok, vo, go, do, ko, like that. So, um, this word here, who wants to try this word? Who hasn't uh, tried nether? Um, easy, uh, doros. Yes, in, in this case, easy the delta is like a Z. Easy zoros. Yes, easy zoros, easy zoros. You see the O is, is, is long, it's longer than the small O, but shorter than the O epsilon. Is Isidorus, which is Saint Isidorus. This is Isidorus. Okay. And the last word here. Uh, let's see. Noah, can you can you read this word? Is Noah with us? With us? Still. Okay, Fennywell, can you say this word? Pishoy. Pishoy, good, Pishoy. Okay, so now we have, we have seen all of the vowels. Alpha, like an A. E, like an E. Eta, like a long E. Yota, which is like a short I. O, which is a short O. The O epsilon, which is a long O. And then the O, which is like a long OA sound. So um, we'll stop here today because um, we're, we're now getting into the time of the rites. Next week, we will continue yeah, learning about the vowels and we will start to read some phrases. Um, with, you know, now, you know, we're graduating, right? So first we learned letters and then we started to read words. So next time, We'll start to read some short phrases. Okay. Okay. So um, last week in the rites, um, we learned about the the offering of the lamb and the orbana and the characteristics characteristics of the orbana. So I'll just review what we learned last week quickly and then continue. So we learned there are you know, specific characteristics of the Orbana. The Orbana is the holy bread, the oblation that, that we uh, take and pray on and becomes the body of the Lord. So we're gonna just bring any bread, you know, like pita bread, for example, or, or Italian bread or, or muffins or anything like that and just use it as Orbana. No, it has to be made in the church and it has to be, um, you know, prayed on and it has to be done in a very specific way. I remember one time um, we were in church for a, a, an early liturgy 
one of those like five to seven liturgies. And uh, the deacon who was supposed to make the orban, he forgot. Like he just forgot to make the orban. Um, so we didn't have any orban. And so um, we had already prayed the raising of incense and we were praying the agbeya and waiting for, for the orban and the orban didn't come. And so uh, like we're thinking what to do. And one guy, he had a brilliant idea and he went to the store and he got some English muffins and he brought it to Abuna and he said, look, Abuna, we can use the English muffins. And um, Abuna, of course, he didn't, you know, he, of course, he wasn't going to accept that. So, but he didn't want to like make the guy feel bad that, you know, he's trying. So he told him, go ask uh, Gerges and, and see what he says. And of course, Abuna knows what I'm going to say. So he brought it to me and he's showing me the ingredients. And it's like, look, it's, it's, it doesn't have anything bad in it. And I said, but I'm sorry, we cannot use English muffins to, to make orban, you know, as orban. It hasn't been preyed on. It hasn't, you know, the, it, nothing like that. And actually what happened is we, we quickly, you know, somebody got into the, the, the kitchen and, and baked very, very quick orbanos. Uh, it was the worst orban I've ever seen in my life. It wasn't even uh, or anything. It wasn't cooked very well. But we, we have to make our bond so that we can pray the liturgy. Anyway, uh, I thought I shared that funny story with you. Um, so the urbana has to be um, has to be made from wheat, okay, um, <clears throat> which is the grain, and it has to be crushed to become flour, just like the Lord was was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities, right? So he was crushed. And it, it has yeast in it. Um, yeast represents sin. So why, why do we put yeast in the Orbana, which is going to become the body of Christ? Are we saying that Christ has sin? No. But what we are saying is that Christ took our sin. He took the sin of the world in his body. And he offered himself on our behalf as a sacrifice. This is why when he was on the cross, he, he cried out to God the Father. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It wasn't because God the Father, you know, um, left him, but because he had in his body, in, his, in himself, all the sins of the world, he couldn't bear it. Like he couldn't bear to look at himself because the, the Father and the Son are one. So he, he gave us that impression that because of the sins of the world, that God looked even for a moment, looked away from him because he could not bear to look at all of the sin in the, in the body of his son. The Urbana is round. And it reminds us <clears throat> of the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of righteousness, but also because a circle is round. A circle has no beginning and has no end. Like you cannot say the circle begins here. Why does it begin here? It could be beginning here. Why here? Could be here. Any point in the circle could be the beginning and the end. So it really has no beginning and has no end. Just like God has no beginning and has no end. The Urbana has many grains of wheat, like all of these, you know, when you take the grain and you crush it. So it's made of like millions and maybe billions of, of grains of wheat. Just like the Lord takes us all in his body when he offered himself as a sacrifice. The flower is white, it has to be white. At, at, one, at one point, actually one of the deacons who was making Orban, he decided to make Orban with whole wheat flour. So the Orban came out dark, you know, like when you buy whole wheat bread. And he kept on arguing that this is more healthy and more right and stuff like that. And of course, that, that is not correct. And, and we have to correct that. So it has to be made out of white flour. And the Psalms are, are read and recited during the baking of the Orban. Not, it's not just something to fill up the time or because the guy who's making it doesn't get bored or has something to do. But it's because all of the Psalms are prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we are making the Orbana, as we are making the, 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 the Holy Bread, we are reciting the prophecies about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I'm, I'm reviewing all of this. We learned last week. That's why I'm going fast. Um, the Urbana has 
12 small crosses around it with one big cross in the middle. The, the big cross in the middle is called spadikon. Spadikon is a Greek word, which means the master. So this is the master, the Lord Jesus Christ, and around him, 12 smaller crosses. They represent the 12 disciples. And it I has five. Questions. Yes. Go ahead. Um, is the 12 crosses, the four on the sides and the four in the center next to the center cross, or are they the small triangle ones too? All, all of them. So here, if you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So all what of about these the one crosses. In the big cross, but like they aren't. Uh, no, this is all one cross. So all of this is, is considered one cross. Okay. Uh, you're talking about these little ones here now. So we're counting these around the, the big one. Okay. Okay. Around, uh, around the, uh, the Orbana, it's written in Coptic, Agios, Otheos, Agios, Yeshiros, Agios, Athanatos, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal. It's written around. And it has five holes in it. This is important. These are the sufferings of the crucifixion. I, I, I talked about that, um, or I mentioned it before, and it was mentioned last week, and I want to make sure that we, yeah, I mean, we, we get this right. There, there are two, like two schools of teaching uh, many people, they say that these five holes represent um, the three nails and the spear and the crown of thorns. But if you remember when we talked about the 41 Kyrielisons, we said that the crown of thorns is, is part of the 41 Kyrielisons because those are the sufferings of the examination. So the crown of thorns is not counted with the five holes because these five holes <clears throat> are the sufferings of the cross. So what are the wounds that the Lord endured while he was on the cross? If we count them, he has one wound in his uh, right hand and one in his left hand. And he has two wounds in his feet. Even so, there, there are some, um, some uh, studies that say that there were two nails in the feet. But even if it was just one nail, there are two feet. So they put the, the, the two feet together and they put one nail through. So there are four wounds. Uh, sorry, there are, there are two wounds on the feet. So you have two in the hands and two in the feet, that is four. And then while on the cross, he was pierced with the spear, right? In his side. So those are the five wounds of the crucifixion. So we have the four wounds of the nails, two in the hands, two in the feet, and then the spear in the side. Okay. I have, I have a question. Yes. Why is there a three on one side and two on the other side? Could the three be on the other side? So if you look at the picture here, right, you have one nail here. That's this one. And then you have the, the, the spear on the side here. That's the middle one. And then you have the right foot here. And then you have the one on the, on the left here. And then the, the one on the left foot here. So there's three on the right side. And uh, like if you're looking at the, at the Orbana, like as if you're looking at Christ. So three on his right side and two on his left. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, I, I will talk about this in, in, in a minute. But when we present the Orban to Abuna, it has to look this way. It has to be the three holes on, on the, you know, when Abuna is looking at it on his left side and two on the right side. Um, the number of, of bread, the number of loaves has to be an odd number. This was talked about last week as well. Why? Because the Lord is unique and has no equal. So if we have like three Orbanas, that means we can take two of them and we say these are similar or they can be paired, but the third one has no pair. So it's unique. Okay. So the, just the, like the Lord, he's unique. There's nobody equal to him, right? None of the humans are equal to him. But if we only had, if we had an even number, then we can pair, we can pair them. And then we it, it would say what? So there's somebody equal to God? No, of course not. Um, so the, the, the number 
has to be odd. It could be three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. It could be, you know, ninety-nine, but it has to be an odd number. Of course, usually it's either five or seven. Usually it's, it's five or seven, and usually seven. I have um, another question. Yes. What if like three of them look the same, like what? similar? Yeah, we're not talking about how they look as, as pieces of bread, but we are talking about the idea that if we if oh. we like if we stood all the humans on earth together, we are all the same. We are all humans. But the Lord Jesus Christ, even though he took the human form, he's different, right? Because he's God incarnate. So he cannot be similar to any of us. Okay. Okay, thank you. So the sacrifice of the Lord is unique. All of this, I'm re reviewing what you learned last week. So I hope all of this is not new information. So now um, the priest begins to examine. He's going to examine the, the bread, but first he examines the wine. As you see in the picture here. Um, so there, this is the bread, and then he's, he's holding the cruet or the container that has the wine. What is he examining? You know, we see Abuna looking at it and, and stuff like that. He looks to make sure that it's clean. Actually, last Sunday, I was I was serving in the altar. I had the blessing of serving in the altar and I was carrying the, the wine. And I looked at it as I was standing there before Abuna took it. And I saw like something in it, some something suspended. And so I showed I showed it to Abuna and he looked at it. And then he smelled it he, to make sure that it's, it's not spoiled. And then with his finger, he like uh, touched this, uh, this thing that was suspended and he took it out. So we need to make sure that it's clean, right? There's no, nothing in it. We smell it to make sure that it's not spoiled. What does wine smell like if it's spoiled? Who knows? Gabby, what does wine smell like? Vinegar. That's right. Uh, spoiled wine becomes vinegar. So if, if you smell the wine and it smells like vinegar, then it's gone bad. So the deacon should also examine it. So what, uh, what Abuna does is, you know, he, he, he takes, like if this is the, 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 the cruet, he takes it, he looks at it, he smells it. And then he also gives it to the other priest or, or the other deacon across from him. And he smells it to make sure that it's good. And if it's good, what does the deacon say? He says it's good and precious. He doesn't just say, yeah, man, the man, Ashara al Ashara. No, none of that. He says it's good and precious. Gaidu Karim. He then he examines the basket of bread before choosing the best loaf to become uh, the lamb. So what does he do when he examines the you know the basket, like all the loaves that are in there? First, he makes sure it's an odd number. We said it has to be an odd number. So if the person who's putting the the um, uh, oblation uh, basket together, miscounted or something, and it's an even number. So Abuna has to remove one of them to make it, to make it an odd number. Um, they have to be aligned correctly. Three holes on the left side, just like we, we talked about just a, a, a couple of minutes ago. So the three holes on the left side, which means, you know, Abuna's looking at it. So that means it's three on, on his left, which means three on the body of the Lord, right? So three holes on the left side and two on the right side. Sometimes I see when they bring the, 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 the oblations and they're not aligned, they may be backwards. So they have the three on the right side. They may not even be aligned at all. So, and then Abuna stands there and he fixes all of that before he starts. So the deacon should actually make sure all of these uh, things are, are right before he offers the basket to Abuna. And that the, um, the urbanas are round and, you know, good round, like a good circle. Okay, so we don't have like, a, you know, a rectangular urbana or a square urbana or a triangle urbana. None of those should be chosen. There are no breaks. So it's not like broken. It's not like, uh, you know, cut or something like that. And, and no flaking. So it's not the farwilla. It's not, the, or, you know, all the urbana is just like, um, you know, uh, flaking and, and breaking up like that. And that the stamp is good, right? So as he 
exam. So you, you see that Abuna, he starts to look at each Urbana and he holds it in his hands and he looks at it, make sure it's, 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 uh, it has a good round circle and it's not breaking, it's not flaking, the stamp is good. There, it has uh, the correct number of holes. Sometimes I've seen, um, you know, where the, the, the Qayyim, the, the deacon that makes the Urban, uh, maybe he uh, didn't pay good attention and he put four holes, he missed a hole. He put in, in four holes instead of five holes. Or he put six holes, he put three on each side. Um, or he didn't put any holes at all, or he didn't stamp it. So all of that cannot be in the, in the basket that, um, that uh, the oblation is chosen from. So what do we do while Abuna is examining the lamb? What do we chant? What do we pray? Lord have mercy. How many times? 40. 40? Uh, Almost. A little 40, bit more than 41. 41. <laughs> yes. yes. So while Abuna is examining the, uh, the, the lamb, we pray 41 Kyrie songs. Lord have mercy. As I mentioned, this represents the sufferings of the trial of the examination. So everything in the church has a meaning. It's not like the church just puts something together and said, okay, well, Abuna's shoes in the lamb. We cannot just stand silent. So let's just chant Kyrie Lysons. How many times? Oh, let's just chant until Abuna's finished. Because actually that some deacons, they, uh, if they don't know the rites very well and they will chant until Abuna finishes. Uh, so they may chant, you know, 25 times, they may chant 40 times, they may chant you know, 50 times because Abuna is uh, taking his time. No, it's 41 times, it has to be exactly 41. If Abuna is choosing fast, then you have to chant it fast. Like that. So you can finish the 41 songs when Abuna finishes the examination. That's another thing that I also see in some churches. Um, they may chant slow. And Abuna's going, you know, at a faster pace. So he's finished. And he goes inside, and then there's more stuff that happens inside we'll talk about. And they're still chanting, And they don't understand that there's a reason that this is chanted during the examination. So if Abuna's fast, you chant fast. If Abuna's taking his time, then you take your time. You go at the same pace as Abuna. The 41, as, as I mentioned, are the sufferings of the examination. So what did the Lord suffer when he was examined? He suffered uh, the lashes 39 times. Uh, he was whipped 39 times. During the examination is when they put the crown of thorns on his head. And during the examination, they hit him on his head with a reed, and also they slapped him. So some, uh, you know, some fathers, they say that the, 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 the last Kiryal is for the reed, and some, they say that the last one is for the slap. Did somebody have a question? Okay. So these are, these are the, uh, the, the, uh, the sufferings of the examination, okay? You also see this, you see that Abuna, when he chooses the lamb, he puts his hands like this. What is, uh, is Abuna, like he can't choose, so he has to put it, again, everything in the church has a reason. When he puts his hands like this, what sign is this making? It's making the sign of the cross. The cross. Okay. So, why is he making the sign of the cross and why is he doing it like this? This actually reminds us of Jacob in the Old Testament. You know, Jacob, you remember Abraham? Abraham had a son, Isaac, and Isaac had a son, Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons. These are the sons of Israel. Jacob's name was Israel later. So, when Jacob blessed the, the two sons of Joseph, he put his, his right hand on the younger one, and he put his left hand on the older one, which is, which is not natural. Because when Joseph brought his two sons, he brought the, the, the elder one in front of his father's right, 
so that he would get, get you know, the bigger blessing. And then he brought the younger one in front of his father's left so that he would get, you know, the smaller blessing. This is how it was, that the older would get the bigger blessing. So it, the natural thing for Jacob to do is put his hands like this on their head and bless them. But instead, he put his hands like this, and he gave the bigger blessing from his right to the younger one, and he gave the lesser blessing to the older one, and he put his hands like this. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head. So he did it like this. And actually, when Joseph saw this, he thought, you know, my father, my father is very old and tired. He didn't realize. So he tried to move the hands of his father to, to go like this. He actually tried to break the cross, if you, if you understand the meaning now. So he tried to remove the cross. And Jacob said, and he told him, my father, not, not so, because this is the older one. And he tried to move his hands. And his father said, I know, my son, I know. I know I'm, what I'm doing. And he kept his hand on the younger one and his left hand on the older one. And actually, um, Manasseh, who, um, who, was the, uh, um, who was the oldest one, who got the, the left hand, the tribe of Manasseh later you know, left God. And they, they, they sinned and everything. But Ephraim, Ephraim received the blessing and he remained with God. So after the priest examines the oblation and chooses the lamb, he takes out a veil that was tucked in his sleeve. You see that sometimes Abuna has like a veil, like hidden kida, And then he takes it out and he begins to um, wipe the... Um, the bread with the, from the crumbs with the veil. This represents the knife that Abraham took to slay his son Isaac. If you remember the story of Abraham and Isaac when he took him up on the mountain to offer him. So he took a knife and he was going to slay his son. And this knife obviously was, was hidden from Isaac because he did not know that he was going to be the sacrifice. So he takes this and he cleans the, the, the bread from any crumbs. And then he takes the wine and signs the bread with it, as you see in the picture there. So here, Abuna, he's wiping the, um, the, the Urbana from the crumbs. And then he takes the wine and then he blesses the oblations with this blood, signifying that this bl body belongs, or this blood is for this body and this body is for this blood. And he blesses the rest of the oblations with the blood. So basically he takes, um, like he takes one, one dip of the blood and he does the, the, the one that's gonna become the body and then he takes another one and, and then he does all the rest of them. And these are the ones that become the olugeya. The word olugeya means gift and baraka, right? The blessing that we receive at the end of the liturgy. After everything is done, we go to Abun and he gives us a piece of urbana, right? These, the, the leftover, the, like the other six become the Ologeia. These were the ones that were blessed, but they were not uh, uh, transformed or changed. The Excuse only me, or can I ask a question? So he is actually uh, a blessing all the oblations, not just one? He is blessing, yes, he's blessing all of them, but he's only taking one that will be changed to the body of Christ. So with the so wine, this, he, this he is cleans? just a blessing. Yeah, it's uh -huh. just a blessing with, with, uh -huh. with, it's not even, yeah, it's wine. It's not even blood yet. So this is just oh. symbolic okay. blessing. But the actual change, so as we say here, the only urbana, the only bread that enters the sanctuary is, is the one chosen. Right. And the rest are placed outside and given at the end. This is very important because sometimes Again, this is why I'm teaching uh, the, these classes, because I want people to understand the rights and the beauty of the rights in the church, that nothing is done haphazardly, kida. nothing is done kida, you know, without, without meaning. Sometimes you find the deacons, they take the, the basket after Abuna chooses, and then they put it inside the altar to oh. say, so nobody plays with it or nobody touches. No, this is wrong. Why, why is it wrong? And actually, Pope Shenouda, if you remember, he was very, very adamant about this. And if anybody brought the basket back into the altar, he would yell at him. One of the very few times that you ever see Pope Shenouda yani, very upset 
is if, 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 if you see somebody bringing the oblations inside. Why? Why is that important? It's not because like the Holy Spirit is going to be confused when it comes down and he's going to see the basket and he's going to change all the urbanas in the basket. Uh, of course not. You know, uh, God, of course, knows what he's doing. But the symbolism here is that only Christ is the only one who's inside the sanctuary. The sanctuary represents heaven. Only Christ can enter heaven. All of us enter heaven through him, but we cannot enter by ourselves. And only Christ is the only one who can be sacrificed. If the whole world, all the, all the people in the world were to be offered a sacrifice, it would still not remove the sin of Adam, not even remove our own sins. So this is why the only urbana that enters the sanctuary is the one that's going to become the, you know, the, the body. Everything else has to stay outside because nobody is worthy to enter into the Holy of Holies except the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, is that clear? Thank okay, you. sure. We will, we will stop here for today um, because actually we're a few minutes over. Um, so let's, let's do our game. Are there any quick questions before we start? Okay. So again, we're going to play Kahoot. So go to Kahoot and um, let me put the link here in the chat for you. So you can click on, you can click on this link and enter the Kahoot game. 